Hi, a few people have asked me after I installed my new uh, Enphase uh, 5 kilowatt solar system, which is this uh, video down the bottom here, I've now got a total of an 8 uh, kilowatt nominal uh, system, a new 5 kilowatt Enphase system with 14 of these um, funky little micro inverters uh, behind every one of my 14 new panels. That's a 5 kilowatt system and I've also got my existing 3 kilowatt system which I installed a long long time ago and I moved that to the other side of the roof over there and it's not performing terrifically but you know it's paid for itself I've done yeah there, there it is the five year solar payback video and everything else so that's the old system it's uh, paid for itself but anyway a quite I'll link these videos in if you haven't seen them but anyway quite a few people have asked many questions about these micro inverter um, systems and one of them was I did a whole video on this is uh, why I'm using 295 watt rated micro inverter on a th with a 370 watt uh, rated panel and I've done a whole video on that linked in um, and that's an interesting uh, question there's sort of like pros and cons uh, both ways but anyway that uh, explains that and all about solar shading and stuff I've done lots of solar videos now Anyway, quite a few people have asked, um, do these micro inverters, how much power do they actually draw at night time when they're switched off? And it's an interesting question. And it has to do with the way that these things are uh, designed internally and also apparent power so we're going to get um into this now this is a i originally did shoot a video on this but it wasn't that clear so i'm simply i'm re this is a new one i'm re-recording it uh from scratch to make it clearer now i've got a solar analytics uh system here i've done a video uh installing that it's a very cool uh system which monitors as well as the end phase uh system i've done <laughs> videos on showing all the data you can extract from that it's one of the advantage of the micro inverters here is that um yeah it's like i've got the end phase envoy system which communicates over for the mains uh, wiring and we might discuss that uh, later and um, yeah it can get data out of these things and we can I can log individual panel data it's really uh, quite cool but one thing this thing doesn't uh, tell tell me which is what this solar analytics system is because I've got uh, clamps a voltage um, it can measure the voltage course and I've got current clamps going over it can measure not only how much energy my solar system is producing during the day but also how much power it's drawing during the night so we can see this and if I go into live it shows me this is what it's drawing at the moment so this is live this is what's happening right now but if I go into what what they call long energy um, I can actually look at both the power the current the reactive power the reactive energy and the apparent power and the power factor because when you measure the voltage and the when you measure and log the voltage and and current of a system then if you know you can work out the phase of this and of course this is all in my AC basics uh, tutorial series I talk about uh, you know capacitors and inductors leading and lagging lagging and uh, how in an ideal capacitor which is what we'll get into there's no power dissipation in an ideal uh, capacitor uh, when you connect it across the mains for example and that will come in um, very important shortly so this really won't be a like a proper tutorial on reactive energy and apparent power I'm assuming Assuming that you've got the concepts but we'll we'll basically go over the uh, pros and cons of the this reactive power so anyway we're able to measure this so I'll go back to June 12th here and you can see this yellow uh, curve here it's a nice perfect day okay so you know there's no shading or anything like that and it's you know it's so the Sun starts at about oh, 8 a.m. something like that it jumps up and then because of like shading in the afternoon from the house next door because it's winter time here in Australia remember this for my 8 kilowatt um, system look at this I'm only getting 3.8 kilowatts out of of it eh, that's the downside of winter time here and my panels aren't on ideal roofs either especially with my old three kilowatt uh, system so yeah anyway so at around about uh, yeah three o'clock something like that it starts to die off die off die off but the good thing is we can measure the power the current the reactive power the reactive energy the voltage the mains voltage here um, if, if you want to know I'm I'm at, at home you can go up to like and get up to like oh look at that 248 volts it's normally like 245 volts something like that I think you can get down to as low as 240 so it varies between 240 volts and like 248 volts at absolute maximum um, but anyway the apparent power is something that we can measure now because I've actually got a current clamp logging the data um, coming to 
And from my solar system, we can actually answer the question, how much power do these uh, microinverters? Remember, I've got 14 of them all in parallel uh, microinverters. I also do have the old Sunny Boy inverter uh, there as well, which is a 3000 TL Sunny Boy inverter. It's, but I've checked the data sheet for that, and it only has um, one watt uh, real it specifies one watt real standby power I don't know what that is in apparent uh, power but we'll just like eliminate that because it's only one compared to 14 of my micro inverters now interestingly Enphase do not tell you anywhere on the data sheet anywhere in the website and I've talked to them in this about it and yeah they do not mention the standby power they mentioned the standby power of the envoy system which they say is five watts i think it is but they don't say uh the va for it the apparent uh power it's because we'll go into the architecture of this uh later on in the video so stick around and i'll show you uh exactly how it works inside um at least nominally from a block diagram uh point of view this ac port back feed current here um uh, this is like a fault current thing it has to do with fault conditions and stuff like that we won't go into it but that's not um, the standby power so we can't get any of this from the data sheet so we have to actually measure it and of course one of the things about the um, Enphase uh, inverters is that they have um, active power factor correction um, so it's it will when it's on and generating it'll uh, be a power factor of 1.0 and, and it can actually correct um, adjustable from 0.5 you can actually adjust it I believe when you set it up or something I don't know the install details and things like that but yeah very cool during the day we don't know how much power these things take but it doesn't matter I'll show you the architecture it's actually powered from the DC side not from the AC side so it you know and that's not the question but at night time here look the, the you can't see the yellow curve in there and sorry I can't zoom in on this but you can see the answer up the top here you can see yellow minus uh, 7.6 9.1 let's say 8 8 watts something like that let's say 8 watts so that's 8 watts real power not apparent power real power standby power for the uh in for the 14 micro inverters but that will also as i said that will also include the uh, sunny boy 3000 tl uh which is one watt uh, real power that's what it says in the data sheet and the um n phase um envoy system which is the monitoring box as well apparently that's <laughs> pun intended I'm here all week apparently that's also across uh the same wiring as well so yeah so I think that one might be in there as well and post editing Dave here I just got some info from I'll have more at the end stick around uh but I just got a um, info from Enphase that the actual power consumption of the Enphase inverters is 15 microamps this is like it's it's essentially zero so this is the real power consumption this is the real measured power consumption it's basically zero so all of this eight watts here um you know well we know that one watt is apparently coming from my sunny boy inverter and i guess the others the envoy um system and the iq uh relays as well on there um so yeah that, that's <laughs> but basically virtually zero of that is the enphase micro inverters but as you can see, they basically draws NAF all at night, real power, okay? But that's not apparent power. So this is the interesting bit. If you've got, if we go over to the current over here, we'll see something very different. And this is where it becomes confusing and interesting. So if we go over to current here, look, at nighttime, 1.1 amps. Why are we getting 1.1 amps? Yes, there is actually 1.1 amp, amps of current flowing at night into these Enphase microinverters. If you get your confuser out, 1.1 times 245 volts, that's 270 watts. Why isn't it showing 270 watts over here? right it should be showing negative 270 watts that it's it's you know standby power no this is because it is apparent power it is reactive power and if we go in here like this we'll see that it actually tells us the reactive power which is VA volts times amps R which are that's why it says VAR above there volts amps reactive the reactive power is the out of phase uh, power calculated based on the current that's actually being drawn and the voltage but this is not real power so 280 var there 280 var and if we go over to apparent power 
it's going to be the same thing. There we go, minus 280 VA there. We don't have reactive anymore. Apparent power is reactive power plus real power. So in this particular case, we can actually look at the power factor, and the power factor is absolutely terrible. Look at the yellow uh, graph here, right? It's absolutely, like, it's it's rounded down to zero, <laughs> okay? Because it's that low. I mean, on, on the graph, it's like 0.03 or something like that, it, it's essentially zero, okay? There's measurement resolution on uh, this thing. It, it's basically a power factor of zero. And we'll go into the architecture um, shortly about how these in-phase microinverters actually uh, work. Um, but it's basically an entire capacitive load. That's why uh, we're getting a negative VA there. If it was an inductive load, like we're seeing the purple one here, the purple one is the fridges, okay? They're my fridges. I've got two fridges, basically, assuming just ignoring all the other phantom power devices in the house at night. This is mostly the fridges. So you can see the actual compressors turning off and on, right? For the fridges. And it's, yeah, it's drawing 530 VA, 640 VA, something like that. But if you go into uh, real power at night, if you're powering these from a battery pack and what you're paying for is only 130, 200 watts, something like that, right? So my fridges and freezers um, draw 240, 200 odd watts during the day. And I'm looking at getting shortly um, like an independent uh, battery backup solution just for the fridges. So that could make for some interesting videos. So stick around for that one. So just to be very clear, residential customers like myself and like or practically everyone else, please, if there is an exception, leave it in the comments down below. But Enphase don't seem, I've talked to Enphase about this, they don't seem to think that there's an exemption uh, to this, which is why they don't mention at all on their data sheet or anything else, they, they don't mention the apparent power because it's not something that the customer gets charged for. It's not something that they need to care about. Um, it's, you know, it, it isn't an issue at all, right? So you don't get charged for that. I don't get charged for that. I, I only get charged for that eight watts. That's all I'm getting charged for, okay? And if I had a battery system, technically, that's all that it would take overnight from the battery system as well. But we'll get into that because that's an interesting story. But yeah, you've got to know the difference between if you put a clamp meter on there, you will actually measure 1.1 amps, right? I will measure 1.8 amps for the 14 microinverters. And as I showed in the previous video, there's another forum. Other people have confirmed this and uh, Enphase have uh, confirmed this as well. And we'll go through the calculations. So this is the confusing part. When you say apparent power or reactive power, okay, the word power is in there, okay? But this is not real power. If you've got capacitance, like we have here, capacitance across the line, capacitors, ideal capacitors do not draw any power at all, but they will cause the, these currents to flow, right? They will tr cause quite large currents to flow. So you get I squared R copper losses and any uh, converter efficiency switching losses as well. So we'll go into that in a diagram in a minute of how all this uh, stuff works. But yeah, um, so don't confuse apparent power, right? Which, which is a calculation of 280 VA. Don't confuse that with the actual real power that you're being charged for and that will be taken from a grid connected battery system. Yeah, so this is uh, really cool. You can see here, right, that um, at, at nighttime, when the microinverters are switched off, because there's no sunlight hitting the panels at all, all the circuitry is switched off, all you've got is the filter capacitors on the output. And that's what we're seeing here, is the filter capacitors on the output. I'll show you the exact values in a minute. But And then, as soon as sunlight starts to hit, it turns on the active electronics in the in-phase microinverter, and boom, it switches from negative reactive apparent power to positive like power and now it's generating right so now you don't care about it. it it's not an issue at all so yeah and then it starts generating power and at night you can see there's still some sun still some sun still some sun and even though it's not really generating much if you know hardly any real power out from the panels and then boop, it switches off and we start drawing capacitive power because the inverters the micro inverters are switched off these things are switched off but they still have large capacitors on the output which are connected across the mains which causes this apparent power flow. So anyway, I hope that's, that's answered uh, the question. Uh, many people have asked how much, what is the standby power 
of these micro inverters and does it make a difference? Well, the answer is um, what you're paying for, not nothing. But it is interesting to note that they do draw 280 VA because of the capacitors on the output. This isn't just an end phase thing. You almost certainly get this with any other micro inverter or any other inverter um, on the market. If they're switched off, they've still got filter capacitors on the output. So unless you actually disconnect them using a relay, then eh, um, the capacitor is going to be across the mains. But hey, that's a good thing. Now, it's a good thing in two ways because you'll notice that my fri the purple one here, this is the consume graph. These are my fridges and freezers turning off and on, right? This is the reactive energy. Or we can go over to the re reactive uh, power here, right? They're gonna, the graphs are going to look the same. Power and energy is going to look exactly the same. It's just the numbers are different. And you'll notice that the yellow one, which is the capacitors inside the microinverters, are one direction and the purple ones in the other direction because there's those fridges and freezers are primarily inductive loads. So the so in this case, having a whole lot of these micro inverters on here can actually be beneficial locally to your system if you've got inductive loads like fridges and freezers in this because it can cancel it out. And that's why we're not drawing much real uh, power here, right? The real the real power that we're actually uh, consuming at night is, you know, is, is not much. So, um, yeah, so they, having capacitors across the mains, it's effectively doing some power factor correction against an inductive load. If you don't have those inductive loads, well, you're not going to get uh, the benefit there. But guess what you get with every uh, inverter that you put on your system at nighttime? You get a free energy saver. Yes, these, <laughs> these ridiculous energy saver scams, which I've done videos on. These are a capacitor in a box, right? <laughs> and there's all marketing wank behind these. They're a capacitor in a box. Um, and I've done videos busting these. Here it is. Here's one of the ones. There it is. There's the capacitor. Can't remember what value it is. You know, it might even be a couple of mic, right, that they put across the mains and they <laughs> they think this is going to save you energy. So I've done, and there's a digital version of these. And yeah, these are just, uh, it's just a capacitor in a box. Okay. So we've got the same thing going on here. Um, these have capacitors in the output. So let's have a look at the block diagram and see how this is all kind of working. All right, so let's have a look at what's going on here. Um, I don't know the exact circuit inside uh, the Enphase microinverter, but this has been confirmed by Enphase um, that the output filter capacitors are three 330 nanofarad capacitors. So they're in here like this. And by the way, these microinverters are all potted, so I can't like do a teardown of one. And uh, then, of course, it's going to have um, some switching, like a switching uh, transformery type thing in it. And the interesting thing is that all the active circuitry is actually powered from the D side coming from the panel so when at night time when uh, the light vanishes um, there's no more power for the internal circuitry um, so all you're left with is essentially the filter capacitors here I'm not gonna like do all the switching components and stuff like that doesn't matter you know it's it's down in the dregs we know the power factor is very close uh, to zero okay which means that it's almost entirely capacitive so you can see that over here right that that yellow line for the power factor it's bordering on zero and when that's bordering on zero then uh yeah it's going to be in in this particular case it's going to be entirely capacitive so that's what we've got we've got almost a nanofarad um, of capacitance there now of course we have 14 of these micro inverters all in parallel so that's actually quite a significant amount of capacitance that's always connected across your mains here, okay? But as I said, this may be beneficial if you've got lots of inductive loads. It, it's kind of like a power factor, like correction uh, thing. So it can actually be uh, beneficial. But um, so let's see what these capacitors actually do, okay? The, the capacitive uh, reactance here, XC, is 1 over 2 pi FC. I've done this in uh, my two AC Basics tutorial video. So it's 1 over 2 pi 50 hertz here in Australia. Now that's 60 hertz rubbish times 990. 90 nanofarads because we've got three in parallel that gives us a, a, a reactance of 3215 ohms okay and then because we've got 14 of those in parallel that's what that uh, symbol there a parallel symbol 14 of those it's actually 229 ohms is the capacitive reactance for all of these microinverters all in parallel here and of course 
this will actually, you have to charge up because it's AC. Remember this, it's cycling one way, the other. These capacitors, every cycle are charging, discharging. And capacitors, they, this is real current that actually uh, flows. So if we get 245 volts, which is my nominal voltage, divided by 229 ohms, oh, what a coincidence. There you go, 1.07 amps. Let's round it to 1.1. What did we measure? Yep, 1.1 amps there you go there's the yellow uh, current there so that's exactly where it comes from it comes from the capacitive output filter of the microinverters this is nothing specific to the end phase um any microinverter or any other inverter as i said the sunny boy inverters will um have this and any inverter will have an ac output filter like this so unless you physically put a relay in here to disconnect it and we'll talk about this in a minute um at night time yeah you're gonna have all those capacitors um, across the mains and it will actually draw a current and that's why my current clamp in here is actually measuring a real when when I say real okay this is not an imaginary current okay apparent power and reactive power these are called imaginary uh, powers right because there it's an imaginary plane it's on the imaginary plane you have to see my AC basics uh, series to understand all this but the current is real the current if you put a clamp meter or a you know a multimeter a clamp meter you will actually measure 1.1 amps RMS in there actually flowing into into the microinverters at night because these capacitors because the cycle's changing. These capacitors must be charged and discharged every cycle. So this 1.1 amps is real. So there is a potential downside uh, to having, you know, a ton of these microinverters in a series like this. You will get copper losses, okay? And so I squared R copper losses in there, right? There's resistance in the wiring. It's very small. In fact, we can go in and we can actually calculate uh, the copper losses are very small, but you will actually dissipate real power in the copper losses in here but as we explained before this is not real power okay so it's not real power dissipated it's just reactive power it's just currents flowing back and forth there's no energy transfer from the grid to um, these inverters over here but this is a real current right so it's got a flow but it has to do with other loads you have on the system power factor correction all that sort of stuff but you are only charged for real power so we're only charged for that seven watts we're not charged for the 280 um the apparent power that we're actually uh drawing due to the uh capacitance and the lagging current caused by these capacitors but yes at night time the only losses in theory that you will have and you will pay for is the copper losses in all of this copper running over here and the connections and stuff like that there is no power no real power at all dissipated in these capacitors here so if you went out and got a thermal imaging camera and put it on those microinverters at night in theory you wouldn't even though it's 280 va apparent power um you will see no power dissipation in this microinverter um you will see like in theory it's nothing if these capacitors are ideal there's no other losses power factors perfectly zero um then yeah you will see no losses um heat generation in this at all you will in theory see a little bit of heating of the wires here due to the i squared r copper losses in there though this is post editing dave here because i just got a response from uh enphase with more detail about how the micro inverter works and it's actually rather clever um this is actually a bi-directional system um i i was originally uh told that the uh, that the Enphase Electronics was powered from the DC panel, right? It's powered from the DC side, so it only gets powered up when the solar panel uh, starts producing power. And that's true the first time that you power it up. It's got to get that initial power. But once it's done that, okay, then it's actually, during the day, it's powered from this. But at night time, it's actually able to take the AC back out of here, okay, and actually do uh, some processing, like end of day processing, if there's any firmware updates at the end of the day, apparently that's when it uh, does it as well. But even though the sun's gone down on your panel here um it can, it's completely bi-directional it can get 
uh, power from your mains because this is a grid connected uh, main system or your battery if it's a you know independent battery connected uh, system then it would it, it gets the power like that and then during the night it's actually still able to operate and this is uh, it's completely programmable and what they can do as part of the advanced functionality in this thing is actually uh, generate uh, reactive currents um, to actually uh, help the grid depending on what the uh, authorities want um, they can actually program the microinverters to actually actively power factor control the grid uh, but in, in a lot of cases they just go eh, no we're, we're just happy with uh, the capacity you don't need to do anything but they actually have the capability at night to actively power factor correction and they can even keep one inverter powered up the rest of them powered down and then that one inverter can compensate for the um, the other inverters but that's obviously not what's happening here because I'm getting 1.1 amps it's not I don't think it's able to actually compensate for that because you've got 300 and you know you've got all this capacitance to compensate for it's not that great but it can actually do active power line compensation which is pretty impressive um other uh, micro inverters might have this capability uh, as well so leave it or other inverters doesn't have like there's no real difference between a micro inverter and a regular inverter it's just that you have an inverter per panel really but there's other functionality uh differences that you might get as well but essentially it's just an inverter so it can actually do bi-directional power transfer and this is why if we go over here and have a look at their Enphase's own battery system come in late 2022 <laughs> can't buy I thought you could buy it already but I don't know maybe delays <laughs> there's a lithium shortage or something isn't there anyway if you go down here you can see how these are the regular microinverters the same ones I've got they just plug in to here because you can actually get power direction both ways they can charge the batteries and they can get um, the energy back out it's bi-directional power transfer and of course that's how other uh batteries battery inverters will operate as well you've got their bi-directional power uh transfer but i didn't know that um <laughs> or i kind of maybe i didn't i'd forgotten but yeah um they're bi-directional because uh that's just the way that they've designed them you don't need this bi-directional capability for a micro inverter that goes in the panel you could have just had it going in the one direction but they've tried but they've thought ahead and gone aha no if we make it bi-directional we can do lots of cool stuff in the future advanced grid control power factor re reactive power correction and all sorts of uh, stuff and then put them on our batteries and reuse the same inverter so that's pretty cool and we also got a figure for the standby power consumption 15 microamps is the real uh, measured by them um, 15 microamps so it's NAFL 15 microamps times 245 uh, volts yeah that's only 3.6 milliwatts um yeah it's you might as well round that down to zero in fact all the uh all of the micro inverters combined even if i had 50 of these things is going to be less than my sunny boy inverter at one watt um real power so yeah the answer to that question is the standby the real standby power is zero but the reactive current is still there because of the capacitance so unless you physically disconnect them you still got the capacitance there so this isn't a big deal you can have as many microinverters here as you like and well you could argue about okay where the actual uh current is delivered from and usually it's kind of like sort of locally so it doesn't come from like the 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 generator over here it doesn't come from the coal fire or wind fired or nuclear power plant over here right it doesn't come all the way in here but but the utility the company that owns the grid they have to account for all this sort of stuff right apparent power is a big deal that's why big industrial customers with huge heavy equipment and stuff like that um they might get charged for uh, their apparent uh, power so that's a complicated thing for, for residential customers um, they don't get charged for it um, but the the utilities will have to install like big capacitor banks like on here and stuff like that so you could argue oh yeah you're doing them some good by having these micro inverters here but it's a complex system argument which we won't go into okay so the apparent power is not delivered right is not delivered right back from the generator over here but it's delivered from somewhere so at at night time if your system is grid connected okay like this Enphase uh sort of confirm this and they say it's going to come from the grid over here and i tend to agree so it's really the grid that's going to provide that current over here so it's not if you've got a home battery storage system it's not going to come from your battery here this battery at night is only going to be delivering the real power 
i.e. that seven or eight watts that we uh, saw. I think it's still going to come from the grid over here. Leave it in the comments down below if you don't agree with that. But once again, it's a complex system thing. But the interesting thing is, if we disconnect from the grid, if you've got a grid independent system, this 1.1 amps, this is real current. It needs to be delivered from somewhere. And in this case, it has to be delivered from your battery, right? There's no saving you from the grid, right? Because you're disconnected from the grid, okay? But it is not real power being delivered. So it's not 280 watts that is coming out of this battery. It's only going to be the real power, which is that 8 watts or thereabouts, um, or in theory, nothing, right? If these are all ideal capacitors, you can put as much capacitance on this line as, as you want, right? It's not going to dissipate any energy. There's no energy transfer from the battery or the grid for that matter to these capacitors because these capacitors, if they're ideal, they don't dissipate any power at all. But the current must flow to charge and discharge them every, every cycle. And that must ultimately come from your battery here. So where you will see losses, actual real power losses that must be delivered from the uh, kilowatt hour capacity of your battery here is, is switching losses in your inverter. You've got to generate that 1.1 amps. So you will get switching losses in this uh, inverter. So, you know, your inverter might be, I don't know, 95, 97% efficient. Although if the characteristic graph of your converter is like this, I might see if I can find one, all right, at high if, if, if this is power level, right, and this is percentage efficiency, okay, it, you know, it might be designed for a sweet spot over here when it's delivering high amounts of power. It, it could be very efficient, you know, it might be like 95% efficient, like right up here, but where, you know, at lower powers, it might, you know, I don't know, it might be 70% efficient, who knows? But anyway, you will have some real power loss due to the efficiency of your inverter over here that has to deliver that current. Even though there's no transfer, energy transfer into the capacitors, you've got the I squared R losses in the cables, all in here, and you've got a little bit, you know, a few percent, five percent, could be more, 10 percent um, loss in your inverters here. So, so you don't get that for free. So if you've got a grid disconnected, a grid independent battery storage system, and you're using micro inverters like this, it might be beneficial for you to put a relay in here at night and disconnect it. But as I said, most people have a grid connected system. So it's actually connected through to the grid, in which case you don't have to worry about this. It's a nothing burger. Um, in fact, it could be beneficial, as I said, because if you've got inductive loads, it can sort of, you know, the capacitance can help cancel out. And here we go. I just found um, this uh, randomly uh, from Penn State Department of Energy Mineral, uh, the efficiency of uh, inverters, like these solar uh, inverter things. There you go. And that's the graph that I showed you. There's like a peak efficiency here. You know, they claim like the data sheet will show, oh yeah, our solar inverter is 98% efficient. Yeah. Yeah. It'll have a peak efficiency there. So at nighttime, if you're only uh, have to supply the current, remember, not not power, not real power, but the current, um, you know, the current's got to come from your inverter. It's got to come from your battery. So, you know, your, your efficiency is going to, at low power levels is going to drop uh, significantly. So, you know, you'll pay a bit of a penalty for that. And if you've got a huge system with, you know, a ton of micro inverters, you know, it, it could start to add up. So I'm just, you know, just be aware that uh, that could be the case. But that's really the only downside if you have a grid disconnected system a totally isolated independent battery storage system then yeah um the currents have to flow so there you go i hope you found that um interesting and yeah this is why um you know there's a lot of people out there a lot of people they install their solar system they'll put a clamp meter on there at night time and they'll measure oh it's drawing amps you know and yeah it is actually yeah there's real current flowing in these wires so yeah just be aware of that um oh i squared r copper losses how much let's quantify it We've got a kneel copper at 20 degrees C. We're doing it per meter, okay? We've got a cross-sectional area 1.5 square millimeters. I do believe that's the uh, size of the radial, it's uh, called. Uh, it's called a radial because it, it it's not looped. It radiates out from your junction box like that. And so, yeah, it's only 11 milliohms per meter. But of course, you have to double that. So at least, let's say about 22 milliohms, you know, 220 milliohms, something like that over a 10 meter run. So the losses are I squared R, so I, one amp, um, you square that, it's still one, <laughs> conveniently, um, times the uh, resistance, which is 220 milliamps, 0.22. So you're talking about 220 odd milliwatts real power loss for a 10 meter run at one amp. So, you know, it's, 
it's not a lot, but you know, once again, you've got the, some connections in there as well, and I wouldn't be at all uh, concerned with the I squared R losses in here, but technically they are there. Just be aware of that. But I think you'd probably get larger losses in your uh, battery inverter system at low efficiency uh, levels when it's trying to, you know, generate um, this current. And that's ultimately got to come from your battery, but only if you're disconnected from the grid. If you're connected to the grid and you've got your home battery storage solution, don't worry about it. I don't think the 1.1 amps is coming from your battery. If you think otherwise, leave it in the comments. But as I said, I think it's going to be coming from the grid. But it also depends on the load that you've got connected over here and is it an inductive uh, load and stuff like that. If it is, it's beneficial, blah, blah, blah. There you go. It's, it's rather an interesting question. What is the power draw of these things at night? And this is why Enphase don't bother to tell you on the data sheet or the website. It's just going to confuse you. Um. Oh, by the way, realize, so some people ask, why don't we just disconnect it? here with a relay at night. Why not? Because on my system, I do actually have, well, I've got two of these. Oh, look, look, they do actually tell you the power consumption here. Look at that, 10 VA. That's interesting. I didn't see that before. They they tell you, um, they and they don't tell you it's apparent power either. They just say 10 VA. So uh, anyway, I've got two of these things and my real power consumption is only eight watts total so yeah it's it's going to be naff all but it's interesting that they tell you that on the va and they don't tell you the va on the micro um inverters so anyway anyway um yeah so i actually have two of these things installed which is apparently a legislative requirement here in australia to meet the australian uh, standards for solar installs you must have one of these intelligent relays uh installed which can automatically, this does some automatic fancy pantsy stuff inside so that, you know, during fault conditions, over voltage, under voltage and other, it will automatically disconnect um, your solar array because, uh, the, you know, the, the utilities don't want, because we've got a huge, we've got the largest solar uptake in the world, the home solar uptake in the world here. I think it's now 35% of homes or something in Australia have solar on their roof. So it's a big deal and it's a big deal for the grid, can be beneficial and also can have downsides for the grid. So during peak times, um, they don't want everyone's solar pumping stuff on here. So if the voltage rises, this is the mechanism that they use. They can actually um, sort of like force people's solar arrays to turn off, but I've never had I never had any indication of mine ever being turned off, but it, it, this is an automatic relay that actually does that. But this is technically, this is also under software control. I, I can actually see this. I can see I can see the serial number of this and that it's physically connected in my Enphase Enlighten uh, system. See, here's my um, Enphase system. And you can see at the top, I've got two IQ relays um, installed in there. So these are actually software controlled and these are in series with with the actual panels, okay? So here's the uh, DC isolator boxes here, and then there's two of these relays actually disconnecting, um, yeah, because there's two separate circuits here, because I've got 14. I think if I had like 10 or 12 or something, I'd only need the one uh, relay and one uh, DC isolator, but you know, it's a larger system. So they had to install the two isolators and the two uh, relays, but I can physically see those devices in there. Um, and the, but I can't do anything with them. Okay, there's the, there's the IQ relays down there. Um, you know, they're operating normally, uh, re retire, replace. I, do, I can't even get the, can I get the data on that? Anyway, Enphase give you data out the, wa the wazoo. Um, it's absolutely amazing. But um, yeah, there's all my individual uh, micro inverters, but I can't, like in theory, they could actually have a manual thing in here or an automatic timer based system to actually disconnect these. They did say it requires 300 seconds or something for the whole system to power back up. So if you did disconnect it at night, you would leave the um, the Envoy system running, which is the box, the separate box that uh, does all this logging, that does all this stuff. This, this is the Envoy uh, gateway doing all this. Um, so yeah, and so in theory, they, they could actually software control these relays. But I was just talking to Enphase and they said, eh, not real, like we don't want people dicking around with that sort of stuff, really, you know, um, it's just gonna, like if you give them the tools, they'll hang themselves kind of thing, <laughs> you know, then they'll get support requests from people saying, oh no, you know, oh, my solar system's turned off, why? I don't know, you were dicking around with the settings, I, you know, and stuff like that. So, th so they wanna make it sort of like bulletproof. Um, so yeah, I guess I can't blame them, but, but technically, that's, I think that's in theory possible to actually disconnect that. It's all fascinating. So thank you for the people who have asked how much power 
do these microinverters take at night? The answer is, well, NAF4, really. Um, un unless you've got an independent storage battery solution which is disconnected from the grid, and then maybe you might have to think about, um, yeah, these currents, because these reactive currents can flow. You can't stop them. Um, <laughs> so the currents are not imaginary, but the power is. Hmm. Catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.